Beckers abound, dig fire around, snorting magic and moon dust. The riding dragon's flood, semen and blood, summons ready to bust. Crew of fucking beauties, we screw and do drugs all day and night. Healers and dealers, we die, clap and fuck our way into the fight. And I do electrify through my penis I rise in full supply I'm gonna ride cherry you can't deny Risk and rip that flip by the name Let's go Alright It's been six months since the adventuring group Known as Risque Rip Rap Saved Eberron from certain disaster By closing gates leading to Delkir That were trapped in Kyber Far beneath the surface during that time, it's been a whirlwind of interviews and autographs, as everyone from Glum Town to Cliff Scrape wanted to know how the unlikely heroes closed all the portals, during the rituals previously only known to the Gatekeeper Druids, and risking their lives against dangerous foes such as Medusas and Oozes. Of equal interest to the public was the announcement of the wedding of the group's bard, Tedred Bootknocker, to a Drider, a Drow Spider Hybrid. Two met during their last adventure. It was love at first, pride. Marriage of a drider to a warforge has definitely caused a stir around all of Eberron, and finding a quiet place to get away for the honeymoon was definitely a challenge. In other news, the location of the final battle, also known as the stronghold of the adventuring group's previous patron, who turned out to be a beholder in league with the Delkir Bella Shira, has been turned into the Risque Riffraff's new headquarters, a bar arena known as Barrels and Beauties. This particular night, the bar is hopping as the wedding reception for Ted Red Bootknocker and his blushing eight-legged bride has kicked into full gear. Although there is fun and merriment, there is also a great deal of tension in the room. On one side of the bar, the bride's side of wedding guests, which includes a couple of driders, giant spiders and a few drow are sitting there awkwardly staring at the happy-go-lucky warforged and his new bride and the host of non-drider drow celebrants from the groom's side of the wedding party who are laughing and getting drunk at the other side of the bar area. And this is where we start our adventure today. Here you are. Happy group of celebrants. Free to celebrate. Ooh, what a wild adventure that was. Amazing. We, we uh, had weddings. We had, uh, we fought a poo. We did great. We did great. <laughs> uh, in celebration, I should whip up our first signature drink here. Some Ted Red's Flaming Boot Knockers. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. We'll take some of those for sure. A nice cinnamon ale a la flambe. Oh. Is that your wife over there? Who's that over there? This is yeah, my wife right yeah. here. This is Drideria. <laughs> Standing up beauty. here with the uh with the minister. She's a beauty. <laughs> That's after, awesome. After a short while, the conversation in the room turns to the group's previous adventures. One local who is on the groom's side of the room is overheard telling his companion. I heard that the last gate they closed to save Eberron was right here, in this very area, and that this bar used to belong to a one-eyed monster, a beholder that served the Delkir Belashira. That can't be true, his companion chimes in. Sure, as a spider has eight legs, it's true, he replies as he stares awkwardly over at the huge spider a few feet across from him. As they're making this conversation, a lady approaches the bar, mysterious lady and she walks up and she says I heard that even before the portals were opened the same brave heroes attacked defenseless Dino the Dino at Dino World then almost lost a reward the person they were supposed to turn into the local sheriff escaped from right under their noses as she gets closer to the bar, you recognize the mysterious lady as 
Aline, the very person who escaped from under your nose back in Salvation Outpost almost a year before. Oh, don't look so bitter. You got your reward anyhow, she says. I had things to attend to that didn't involve spending time in some jail in the middle of nowhere. Here, I'll make it up to you. With that, she throws a gemstone onto the bar, a green glowing gemstone. With that, she winks and disappears into the crowd. We gotta start carding harder. Can, can, <laughs> I, can, I, uh, can I use it um, to take magic onto this gemstone, please? Yes, you can. And you uh, do not notice anything strange about the gemstone at all. It's just kind of just, just a glowing gemstone. How many people are in how many people are in this bar right now? Um the well there's probably I don't know you can see you can kind of see who all's there. It's the the groom's wedding party and the bride's wedding party. It's you guys and then probably another I don't know about 5 or 6 of the the bride's wedding party. We got drow, we got spiders, we wow. got driders. Yeah, lots of lots of drows over here. Do you also kind of notice that uh Retsum and Ragnar are kind of getting drawn to this gemstone. It's shiny. I like it. I mean, it is a cool stone. Why are they being drawn to it and none of the rest of us are? Just want to kind of reach reach out. Is, and... Can I make an insight check? Is this like a natural drawing to it or is this like something that's like out of their control? Um, you, you see that they're just kind of, you know, they, they feel like they're maybe getting an, an, an intuition or a feeling that that's kind of leaning them toward it. You don't see anything like nefarious about it. You just feel that they, they're kind of being drawn to it kind of naturally or, or even maybe supernaturally. But they kind of have, a, have an instinct toward this gemstone. The two of them, for some reason, are, are being drawn toward it. I'll, I'll just hold on to it for safety. I mean, maybe I should hold on to it. No, 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 you I can't mean, be trusted I, with things. What do you mean I can't be trusted with things? I have a little purse on my side that I can keep it in. It's perfect. I keep it they nice both roll a d20. <laughs> okay, it's a lovely see. purse, by the way. <laughs> Not a purse, it's a oh, European carry-all. I got a 19, baby. Give me that stone. <laughs> So Redsum reaches in and he grabs the stone quickly, snatches it before uh, Ragnar can even get a hold of it. And as he does, he passes onto the ground and passes out conscious. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, now that. Oh, am I the one that's on the ground? Uh, who was it, sorry? No, you're oh, fine. I got it, and I am now unconscious. Yes. My bad, my bad. Uh, and, um, I was supposed yeah. to be off tonight. Now I got to work. I do a medicine <laughs> okay, check on so him. I, I'm just going to say this right now. Now that he's sleeping, I'm going to take the stone. I would advise against that. I would highly <laughs> advise against that. Okay. Ragnar, Ragnar. grabs the stone, and, and when he grabs the stone, he also unconscious. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the stone, too, just because, you know, I feel like, you know, it can't happen three times, right? I'm going to grab that stone myself. Grab the stone. Nothing happens. Ooh. Okay. okay. Now just have the stone in your hand. Um, okay. I give Capone a stern look, and I'm like, are you trying to create more work for me? I already got two to work on. <laughs> and the other two are still unconscious. I try to perform medicine and see what's going on if there's anything I can do for him. All right, roll a medicine check. 18. All right, you're able to get um, some back conscious again. Do we know why they passed out? Um, I believe that uh, during this time that uh, Ritsum may have had a little insight. Whoa. Uh, wow. That was, uh, 
Whew. Did I have... <laughs> Did I drink too much? <laughs> I, had... I was having some flashbacks there, guys. It was... <laughs> It was it was a thing. Uh yeah, so I, I, I saw I, I saw myself back at my village. And it, it, there was there was a, 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 a girl that I, I remember who was a friend and I, oh, I, I it's it's blurry, but then I saw this island. I, I think it was the I think it was the island of the bitter sea. And ice cream down to sorry. The island was on the back of a giant sea turtle. I I know this sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but I saw these things, and then there was this like large dragon. I I think it was gold. And the, and then there was some kind of message you put on the wall, and then it flew off. I I think we have to go. I think we have to go to the sea turtle island. I scream down to Retsum and I say, are you playing the pass out game again? Or are you just tripping balls right now? I, 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 that's what I was thinking at first. I was like, man, that, uh, that Flavin boot knocker really, really knocked my boots. <laughs> but I think this was, I think this was, was real. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I feel like we really have to go there. But I don't, I, I don't, I don't know why. I just. We must go. On my wedding day, really? It, think of it like a honeymoon. <laughs> That's a great story and all, but I'm going to try and get up, uh, you know, Ragnar. <laughs> Make sure he's okay. <laughs> oh, there's a 27. That should do the trick. Yeah, uh, Ragnar is now conscious again. He wakes up a little bit uh, groggy, but um, he used to be okay. Wild. Let me guess, you're tripping wild, too. Wild dream. Let me tell you. So, almost got hit in the head by that gemstone. And when I picked it up, it just, it shattered. Alright, so like, there I am. And I'm on island. And I, I, I think it was the Bitter Sea. But the island is like on the sea turtle's back. But I saw. And there was this glorious golden, I, I think it was a dragon. And, and it, it breathed like a message on the wall and fire. And then, like, it disappeared. But, like, uh, may maybe we go check this place out? I think we have to. Sounds like an adventure. Vision. Let's pack our bags. Why don't we have a drink yeah. before we go? Let's have a drink and a, and, a, and a toast. Since it is Coops' wedding, let's have a toast. And then I say we go on an adventure. Okay, but yeah. only if we do flaming boot knockers. Okay, I'm up, I'm game. Let's do Let's it. Let's do one for the risky riff riff raff. I look do down at uh, RWA and I say, "Can you believe how low their tolerance is? All these organics. This is crazy." <laughs> yeah, I'm used to it. But yeah, hey, okay, we'll weird. do a drink. Toast. Yeah. <laughs> Great toast. Real Actually, quick. Real quick, do I? What are the dryads doing? Are they like, what is with these people? Or <laughs> they're all staring at you like you're the, the strangest things they've ever seen, and they're they're really confused now that you passed out, and they're some of them have already kind of left, you know, and, and wandered off. Um, some are fighting in the arena, others are just kind of you know just 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 left, and they're like, okay, I don't know what to think about all these people, but you know they're and they're some kind of staring at you like you know why are, why are you passed out? What happened? You know. Um, yeah, they definitely think this is odd. All right. Well, we try to call them as best possible. No, no, no. This is this this usually happens. Don't worry about it. Typically normal. Everything's fine. <laughs> as you're all uh, toasting, you also notice that uh, someone else walks up to also toast with you, and and you recognize this person as Mazia Delirander, who um, is a member of a dragon marked house. 
In fact, the dragon marked house that is in charge of air travel. And um, she walks up and she's obviously, you know, a huge fan of Ted Red Bootknocker and she had attended the wedding. Um, and you recognize her from that. And since she's uh, overhearing all of these discussions about flying somewhere, she offers to give you group passage on the Golden Dragon, which is an elemental-powered airship that belongs to her house, of Slyrander, um, and gives you this a passage on this ship to try take you to Sea Turtle Island as a wedding gift to Red Bootknocker. The, like a forty dollar, uh, it's like a forty gold piece gift value, basically. Person. Oh wow! So it's a pretty good gift. I say thank you to Mazia, and then I look down at Ragnar and Redsum and say, "Really? You guys thought it was an actual golden dragon?" Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's what I saw. They were tripping. I'm sure they were tripping. But all right, all right. <laughs> well, what we'll are in those flaming what boot knockers, man? <laughs> Mostly mortar oil, but yeah, that's another story altogether. Nice. Yeah, I'm game. Let's go. Uh, let's go see some sea turtles, man. Let's go on an adventure. All right, climb aboard the uh, golden dragon. All right, first I'm gonna climb aboard my wife, and then we'll climb aboard the golden dragon. <laughs> For the road. <laughs> Got a contract. Right. You know. Exactly. We've got ten seconds. <laughs> Kyle, right here. Just jump on. Jump off. All right. Onto the Golden Dragon. Right. You board the Golden Dragon, a fire elemental powered airship belonging to House Lyrander. A dragon mark house obviously is in charge of all air travel for um, Eberron. And as you're flying toward the Sea Turtle Island, you see Mazia de Lyrander and the bosun, a half orc named Velgrim, chatting it up. And you notice a bit of an attraction, but you also notice that the two are trying their best to keep professional and platonic relationship aboard the ship. As you reach the last part of the journey, you see that the airship is going lower toward the water in order to prepare to land. You're about 20 feet above the surface of the water. And you can see that the you know Sea Turtle Island is you know, a little bit ahead of you, probably about 200 feet ahead of you. And you look over the front of the airship and you see that the captain, Alistair de Lyrander, comes out of the captain's cabin and begins speaking with um, the other two people there bosun and and the lady and um all three look noticeably concerned and then shortly thereafter they began speaking with the other passengers and um you presume they're asking them all to get below deck as you see them all heading in that direction as you look below you you see the vast dark water of the bitter sea it's at about 20 feet below you not much else then you look up and you see a second airship pulling up right beside the one you're on. Before you can even think, human male in robes and a large construct of some sort have teleported onto the Golden Dragon about 15 feet in front of you. And the human begins casting. Full initiative. Uh-oh. Let's right. go. Are they wearing eye patches and have hooks by chance? <laughs> nope. Okay, not pirates. All right, so he began casting. It appears to be some sort of, 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 of robed male. That is all you know. Then I will take this opportunity to cast Dispel Magic. Are you thinking of Counterspell? No. Okay. I rolled my Let's initiative. Make this spell go away. Okay, so we need uh, three more people to roll initiative. I've got an 18. So you're casting it on what? What are you casting the spell magic on? Uh, the guy that's casting. Oh. I figure it can't hurt. Uh, are the enemies going to roll initiative as well? Yes. It is 10 and 14. 10 for robed creature and 14 for the um, larger construct so Kala is up first okay since I'm up first and did Bondo's dispel magic have any effect did have an effect the person is still casting 
He's still casting though. Okay. Um. I wonder if I should. Let me go ahead and I can cast. Have we even just decided to talk to them, or we feel like we're in danger? I have a good feeling we're in danger. We're in danger. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was there too. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess I can go ahead and throw a flaming. Sif well, let's think about that real quick. Actually, we're on a boat. Yeah, it's a wood boat. It's a wooden Keep boat. That mine. Yes. Yeah, I'll Maybe. throw some fire around. <laughs> Uh, let me go ahead and hit them with my, uh, my, my, uh, thorn whip. It can reach. I wonder how close we are. Are we about 30 feet away? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yeah, about 30 feet from where you are. I think the people in the back row here might be, might need to take a couple steps forward. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit my thorn whip. I'm not going to pull forward. I'm just going to, you know, just, you know, slap that big old boy around a little bit, okay? <laughs> All right, let's do... Twenty six. Nice roll. Nice. Right, you hit. I hit and, and the I... web comes over and it slaps it and uh just the mage and uh the mage is is, is is a little bit damaged. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, okay. And its concentration is, is broken. Sweet. And uh a cult is gonna end her turn. All right, next up is Capone. All right, I'm going to run up, and I want to stand uh, right in front of those three guys. I want to stand right at the tip there, right at the tip. I want to stand in front of everybody. I want to let them know uh, right in front of those three. Yeah, right there. And I want to let them know I'm here. I'm going to rage in their face, and I'm going to yell out the biggest scream, and I'm going to start mowing them all down, and I'm taking them all out. I'm just going for the one right in the middle with the range. I want to protect our guys in the back. Uh, so we're going to start with that. We are going to rage, uh, first things first here and give me one second. All right. And then we are going to attack the archer in the middle with the great ax. 23 to hit. Okay. 16 damage. Slicing. All right, slicing and dicing. I am going to attack the same guy again. Then I'm going to look him deep in the damage? eyes. We have 18. All right. That one does slicing and dicing as well. You a little bit of damage. Okay, and uh, that will be uh, the end of my turn. All right, uh, next up is Faceless. So we got five enemies correctly. Um, correct. We have a rogue, a mage. Uh, I am going to tap my heels and I'm going to fly over the top of the, the three in the front and land directly in the, between the construct and the mage. And I'm going to hex blade the mage, and then I want to attack him. Sixteen to hit. I did not hit. So I passed right past. <laughs> wow. I think I'm those, those, I think those drinks are still uh, affecting me at the moment. Um, <laughs> I go to swing again and I do a little bit of a stumble and uh, completely miss him. Uh, yeah, that's the end of my turn. All right, so I'm up next. Um, I'm going to walk over underneath here. Before I take my turn, I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to give Bardic Inspiration to Grog. So Grog, that means it's a bonus act. Uh, sorry, uh, you gain Inspiration uh, D10 on one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. So I play a little bit of music for you, and uh, that means that you get that extra D10 on your on one of your rolls. 
Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scream up to the mysterious woman, Belgram, and Alistair and say, are we attacking you for any reason or are you on our team? Belgram and Alistair are underneath the boat with um, the rest of the people on the ship and they are boarded up underneath there. They're obviously scared and have no idea why this person is boarded. I look up at Capone and I say, please don't attack the other uh, guests on the on the on the airship here. It might be a little bit uh, painful. <laughs> and then I look up at the human wizard male and I'm within 30 feet, so I'm going to cast sleep. So I roll five D eight and the total is how many uh hit points of a creature the spell can affect. So I'm going to do 5d8. 5, 10, 15, 20. So this can affect a creature with 27 hit points. Does that work? Oh, they're unaffected. Okay. And then I have my turn. So next up is the larger construct. Right, you see this big, huge, monstrous construct. All of a sudden, you see that the uh, that that it has like this amulet around its neck, and it starts glowing brightly. And then it starts heading up, and all of a sudden, you see it like starts its whole body starts glowing temporarily. You feel as if maybe it, it is starting. To, some of its wounds are starting to heal up a little bit. And then. You're like, well, wait a minute. Why is it? Why? Why? Why was it? It you hit it. Uh, then you notice somehow that it had been wounded indeed. Oh. During this entire encounter so far. So, as that has been the case, nonetheless, it walks over to uh, where the um, the robed creep uh, man is, and it walks over and it starts to attack. Sorry, I'm uh, okay. And it will attack. Useless. Bring it on. And hits with one attack. It punches you with this big old huge fist. Cool. How much damage did I take? Uh, 11 is all. Okay. I'm going to use my action to cast Hellish Rebuke onto the construct. There's a DC save of 17. Did not save. Okay, affected. So, he, so he took 28 points of damage. All right. And it ends its turn. All right. Robed, uh, robed enemy is up next. Hey, you see this... Uh, lovely uh person here all of a sudden decide that it's going to also um start casting again kind of just move its hands up and start mumbling and and making a lot of noises and uh you, you don't even really understand what he's saying but you all of a sudden see that he is uh he's kind of making some noises and he kind of comes up and i need um pretty much anybody within about 90 feet um to roll a wisdom saving throw. That's everyone. I think so I would roll a wisdom saving throw. 23! Boom! 17. 16? Okay. I got 15. Hey. Faceless, Faceless and Ragnar feeling themselves kind of getting a little stiff. 
you know, kind of just looking at uh, it's kind of feeling a little stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. And then all of a sudden, it, like, you know, they're just kind of stuck in place. Really? Can't move. Like paralyzed? Yeah. What a fit does paralyze. Have? Oh, I like that. That's cool, man. Little icons, those are cool. Yeah, we lost some status markers. That is awesome. So that was uh, Faceless and Ragnar, is that correct? Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, can I still attack while I am paralyzed? No. No. Can't nope. move or, or speak. You're a vegetable, bro. <laughs> we'll protect you, buddy. Is that the end of their turn? That's how they end. They, they actually they, they end their turn. Yes. All right. Retsum is up next. I kind of screwed up, but yeah, Retsum is up next. Okay. Uh, so it seems like that mage is a problem. I'm going to uh, fly up over and uh, go to the the left of the mage there, and uh, I'm just going to give him a Good old blast with Peacemaker here. I believe you have advantage on this roll, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know how range works. Uh, that is a good question. I'm not sure, but I got a 27, so I don't know oh, if I need Never it. mind. You're good. <laughs> You're <fine. laughs> definitely, uh, good. definitely have, have blasted, blasted him. So. I'm good. Uh, now, there is one other thing here. Uh, when Peacemaker hits, uh, anyone within a five-foot uh, range has to make a uh, deck saving throw, which is... I think that's just the uh, the robed person, maybe the elemental. Yeah, yeah, those the two, two enemies. I think it's a 16, 8 and 8 plus 8. Yeah, it's eight plus my proficiency plus my dex, which would be uh, eight plus eight, 16. Robed person, um, he fails, but uh, the construct is fine. And then that does how much damage? Uh, 1d8. You notice all of a sudden that the uh, construct also takes damage during that attack. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and then uh, I'm then going to use my second attack uh, to hit the uh, the mage with Roosevelt. Give him a good smacking. That's a 20. Smacked him right across, kind of pounded him straight into the, you know, the, the, the broad side of his back. And yes, he did hit. And then I'm going to use a key point for my... Flurry of blows. Get one more attack on him. Uh, 16? One did not hit. Did not hit. Okay. Uh, and then can ends... reset, by the way. What's that? You can spend key to... You spend one key to give yourself a plus two, three oh, attack. Oh, that's right. That's right. I can. Up to three key. Yeah. I'm going to go, do that and uh, focus my aim, which adds uh, two to that roll. So it's an 18. Right. Then you, you are able to beat him up. Not nice. Let's go. Give a little bit more damage there. All right. You notice Let's every eat. time you hit him that the construct takes damage. Good, good. That's what I expected. Uh, and yeah, that ends my turn. All right. Nice. RWA nice. is up next. Kind of kick my neck to the side. Nice little crack. I'm like, ah, it's good to be back. It's been a while. And I do my best Darth Vader impression, and I cast hold on the robed, mysterious person. Will save 16. It had no effect. Ah, all that dramatics and a failure, of course. <laughs> I would like to move uh, halfway up the stairs. And there. yeah, that's good. And that is uh, my turn. 
All right. Uh, next up is Ragnar, who is paralyzed. Did I notice like it had absolutely no effect if there was something on the ordinary or just I just failed? Oh, he just failed. Okay, thanks. So, if I read this right, being paralyzed, I can't move, I can't speak, therefore my turn ends. Yeah, you can't do much. You get a save throw, though. Yeah. Do you need to definitely save and see if you can get out of it? Uh, what's save wisdom again? A wisdom. And 20. Ah, okay, you are no longer paralyzed. You're good. Let's go. Nicely oh. done. Nice job. Snap out of it, boy. Nice. <laughs> Back in the game. All right, is that the end of your turn? Uh, yeah, that has to be the end of my turn. Okay. All right, we're back up to the top with uh, Caleb next. All right. So I want to run up there and do some poison spray on the construct. And then come running back down. I they do have a con say fifteen or sixteen, I'm sorry. Run up and you spray poison on this construct and the construct seems totally unaffected completely. Just can't even not even not even phased at all. Okay, so, so brushes sorry. it off as if it was like, you know, I don't know. Oh, nothing. Oh right. I go ahead and run away again. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can run five feet back. So you want to like sit on the right. stairs about here? Yeah, sounds good. All right. I looked at you and was like, you just threw coffee at me. Why would you throw coffee at me? I tried. <laughs> I don't know. Nah, it's all good. Here except fire. It's all no, good. I got you. I get you. All right. Capone is up next. All right. So I'm actually going to body check my way through these guys and i'm going to stand in front of the lovely mage and uh i am going to actually look at retsem yatid and yell out bash brothers and i am going to start swinging at this beautiful bald man uh in front of me <laughs> <laughs> hello beauty now i'm gonna kill you hello <laughs> 21 to hit which i believe is a hit Oh, yeah. You, you you sliced him. And a nine. We are going to repeat that again. And you can reckless, by the way. With crit. Oh, yeah. You definitely uh, doing some damage there. You're cutting through him. All and right. then like some cheese. Let's do it. That's 19 damage. And we are going to do uh, one more. Again, every time you slice him, you notice that the construct is taking damage as well. All right. Then a 19. So I believe that's three hits. Yes. And 11. So there we go. Slicing and dicing. And that will be the end of my turn. All right. Next up is Faceless. Okay. So again, I am paralyzed. So there's nothing else I can do but do a save. Yep. And I failed. You are still paralyzed. The end of your turn. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so next up is a uh, larger construct. All right. Well, the larger construct sees that uh, it has a, a, a an enemy there that is uh, just kind of standing there. So it uh, does its uh, it takes its big huge fist, and hits uh, the paralyzed person there. Uh, this will be a crit hit. 
because he will have advantage over me. Yes, it will. And both hits hit. And they are uh, critical hits. So. Yikes. Yeah, that's going to be a, it's going to hurt. <laughs> a bit. But this guy doesn't do a whole lot of damage, so it's not, it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, you're, you're only going to take about 20 points of damage, uh, for each hit. So it's 40 total. Just a scratch. Just a scratch. Just a scratch. You're good. <laughs> a uh, do any side effect from that? Like, does that unparalyze me taking that massive nope. blow? Or still, nope. uh, still? In fact, it makes you more paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you don't feel it, probably, you know? <laughs> hey, there's a benefit. Comfortably <laughs> numb. Realize, you'd be like, ouch, ouch, what, what, what happened? Comfortably numb. <laughs> and then the uh, construct uh, ends its turn. All right, robed person up next. All right, robed person uh, starting to uh, to feel the effects of this battle here. Um, decides that they are going to... Uh, to, uh, do a little bit of, of of some some escaping here so you see them all of a sudden stand there and then you see them start casting and uh soon they are are, are no longer human but are indeed now a black dragon so you see this black dragon kind of you know standing there in front of you uh -oh. what uh oh <laughs> oh boy <laughs> uh -uh. What? Well, get the saddle. <laughs> <laughs> well, this escalated quickly. Yeah. <laughs> it ends its turn. All right. I prefer the bald, beautiful man. So that was its turn. It just transformed to that. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Let's move some stuff around here. All right. Uh, so for my, is it me next? Yeah. Uh, so for Tedred's turn, I'm going to summon my mage hand. First, actually, sorry. First, I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna pull myself up onto this platform, so I'm a little bit closer. I'm gonna summon my mage hand. And I'm gonna get my mage hand to do two things. One is try and hurry all of the other passengers on the boat underneath into the cabin because I realized on my last turn that we were attacking them by accident and that was a mistake. So I'm kind of shoveling them down into the under cabins down here so that they'll be safe. All these uh, different people here who were actually not attacking us and after they've been escorted down into the safety of the undercarriage of the cabin then I'm going to use my mage hand to try and slap faceless awake and go wake up wake up wake up <laughs> does that have any effect faceless Roll a uh, saving throw, wisdom saving throw. 14. You're starting to wake up. I think you're you're starting to wake up. I think you might actually be be awake at this point. Oh, sweet. Well, Thank cool. you. Nice play. <laughs> oh, right. my face. Oh, what just happened to my face? Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Man. Ouch, ouch, ouch. What happened here? You also took 12 points of damage from the slap. <laughs> <laughs> What was in those drinks, man? Shit. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. I thought I thought you were faceless. I didn't realize slapping your face would actually hurt you. <laughs> well, All, right. Like, oh. All right. With uh, faceless now unparalyzed, I end my turn, and Retsum is up next. All right. I am uh, staring down at this dragon here. And uh, I think it's time to to really just go bash bros on them and just keep smacking with Roosevelt. Uh, 22. I think that would hit, right? And then we'll give uh, another good smack-a-dacky. 
Ooh, that's a 14. Does a 14 hit? Probably not. It did not. The first one did, though. And uh, I will use two key points to add four points to that to make it an 18. Nice. Right, 18 that did hit. should hit. All right. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to save the key points for now, and I will end my turn on that. You can still bonus action punch. Oh, that's right. I can still bonus action punch. Eh, 11. <laughs> I tried swiping at him, but I missed. <laughs> <laughs> like the yeah. Anderson Silva of dragons. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah, that ends my turn. All right. All right. RWA on the stairs. Okay. Um, I'm going to assume he's not in humanoid form here. So I just want a quick question. If I get next to him, I will have advantage if I attack him, correct? Because uh, all the people surrounding him. Yeah. Okay, I'll get next to him. And I'm going to cast level four. Uh, I call it step off, bitch, but it's technically guiding bolt. <laughs> and uh, let me get my uh, spell up here and cast it. Uh, you have disadvantage in melee, so it would cancel out the... It's not melee, it's a, it's a spell. It, it's a ranged spell. Even with war casting? That that doesn't affect whether it's ranged or melee. Ah, oh, dang it. If you were to cast a melee spell, like inflict wounds, it would have advantage. Okay. Uh well yeah, I'm not gonna cast that with disadvantage then. Uh well the advantage and disadvantage will cancel each other out, so it'll just be normal if you don't care about the advantage. Okay, I'll just cast it normal then. All right, here comes the roll. 17 to hit. You, it, is, it is your bolt. Hold, aim's true. All right, so you guys just heard the picture in your head. Uh, I'm going to steal from Marvel, Iron Man. I stem my hand, and you hear the... <laughs> and that is my guiding <laughs> bolt noise at level four. So there we go. Here comes some damage. 26 radiant damage. Nice. Nice. Again, you see that damages hit both both creatures. All right. Uh, ba uh, sorry, Ragnar is up next. <laughs> okay. So, I am going to go up the stairs to the right of me. And I'm assuming that this is polymorph magic that turn this guy into a dragon. Therefore, just to be safe, I will cast a 5th level Dispel Magic on the Black Dragon. Alright. Have a uh, dispel magic on the black dragon. Do you notice that the black dragon is still a black dragon? Hmm. Well then. Um. Good luck, everybody up front. That ends my turn. <laughs> and that brings us back to the top. So, Cal, it's your turn. All right. So I'm going to run over there to that black dragon and poison spray him again. If I can do this this time. So that's uh, Constitution 16. Don't 
Did he like it? All right. Um, it did do some damage too. Oh, okay, so the damage is nineteen. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna take some steps back to my step that I like over there. Seems pretty nice. Safe. Oh no, no, fallen. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Fall. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There. <laughs> awesome. I am done. All right, nicely done. Next up is Capone. All right, so I'm going to actually move in between uh, Faceless and the big rock guy there. Yeah, just uh, try to shield him a little bit. So I want to get in between the the, the bad guys and Faceless. Uh, maybe I can take a couple of hits for him instead. And I, I get advantage because I'm behind the dragon now, correct? Yeah. So I will um, attack the dragon from the back. Twenty-six to hit and damage. We have seventeen. I'm gonna pull what back my axe. Do? I'm gonna pull back my axe again, and I'm aiming for the head. I'm gonna do it again. Let's go. We got a crit there. Uh, Twenty-eight. With a damage of 28. And I'm going to go right. one more time with a big scream. I'm going in again. Let's do it. 24 to hit. With 15 damage. Good job. You've done some major damage to this, uh, to the, uh, dragon and it is uh it's very visibly damaged at this point all right so is the uh the construct all right that's the end of my turn nicely done all right faceless okay um from my first turn after being hexblade curse each turn the dragon has been taking five damage from my maddening curse i just couldn't uh, relate it because i was uh paralyzed um i am gonna just swing at it I am I am super pissed off with this construct, and I need to release some anger. So, uh, well, maddening curse is a bonus action, right? Um, as as they uh, as a bonus action. Oh, it is a bonus action. So I have to yeah, cast today. Like yeah, oh, okay. You have to use it, which you can't if you're paralyzed. Ah, oh, okay. Fair enough. Good to know. Twenty six to hit. And twenty damage. Right. Twenty three to hit. At nineteen damage. And as a bonus action, I want to ma make him mad and do another five physical damage to him. And I end my turn. All right, back up to the larger construct. Right. The larger construct, you notice, is also visibly uh, damaged as well. And so he is um, going to stand there for the moment, and he's going to kind of protect the uh, dragon in the way of, of, of anything that's kind of coming toward the dragon. He's just going to kind of stand there for a moment. You notice that his um, his amulet is, is, is still glowing, and that you also see that he is also uh, healed a little bit more. And um, that he is just going to stand there and protect for the moment. All right. And is that the end of the Construct's turn? Uh, the Construct is just going to uh, guard. All right. Back up to the road person slash black dragon. Right. And uh, the black dragon, you see it, is now going to uh, up and fly. It is flying over to the back of the ship. It is going to kind of uh, be pushing ship of around. And while it is pushing the ship, you see that the uh, the the amulet on the uh, construct is also uh, kind of glowing. 
a little bit more as well. So it is kind of using its its nose to kind of push the ship a little forward a little bit. And that the amulet on the uh, the construct is also glowing at the same time. It's kind of kind of odd to you. You're like, what's going on with this? It's kind of weird. And um, and when this happens, suddenly see that um, all of a sudden, all of you guys, as as this, as this, as this amulet's glowing, kind of like a bright, I don't know, kind of a bluish color. All of a sudden, you see that all of you shoot up into the air about a hundred feet. Whoa! Like you're falling upwards. Falling upwards. <laughs> all right. Will, will my uh, wing boots um, be able to stabilize me? Because I haven't turned them off. You can stabilize, you know, pretty close to where you are, like a little bit above. You go a little bit higher, but you don't go 100 feet. You're just kind of raised a little bit above where the boat is. So you're kind of like, you know, hovering above airship. Okay. The rest of you are kind of kind of gliding upwards. Like you're heading towards, like you're kind of like floating upwards toward the sky. Would my flying ability uh, be able to uh, prevent this? You're kind of, you know, you're kind of just kind of free falling, let's say. It's almost like you're falling backwards. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and the dragon is kind of pushing you, pushing the boat further away. Yeah, I don't like, I don't like the sound of this. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Yeah, he's pushing the airship like further forward, further forward, further forward until there's only water below you. Airship is no longer below you and you are floating, hovering above the water. Airship is out, out not below you anymore. All that's below you is water. Uh, Great. I hope, I hope uh, the rest of you can swim. <laughs> Got your floaties. And with that, dragon swoops down, grabs the guardian, his claws, and flies off. Do I get an attack of opportunity? Uh, no, because you're in the air. You're in the air right now. You're flying off. You would have probably gotten one on the uh, on the way out, but it didn't really matter because, yeah, he still was able to get off. Right now, you guys are kind of just you know hovering above you know. Of the water and the boat's no longer below you <laughs> you do have you know starting to kind of get you know a little bit you're starting to like go down slowly go down slowly go down slowly now the the, the, the spell is kind of fading as time goes on and you're about to hit the water soon do Before i we hit i was gonna say do i have uh the ability to maneuver now since I, I can fly yes as it now you can maneuver so if you have the ability to fly like with the boots of flying or you're flying as the spell is fading out and you're no longer being pushed upward yeah. um you can now well, use your abilities to uh can, be able to kind of do something can I open up a big enough dimension door um to for everyone I know because I can only take two people one person with me I can do um, Dimension Door 2, though, so if the two of us take two people with us each, and then the two fly, and then the person who can fly, I think we can save everyone that way. Yeah. So I'll take... There's, um, there's seven of us. Right. Sorry, yeah. Uh, wait, could, I, I was thinking, can Ori, can you carry people? Or sorry, Resim, can you carry people? Uh, I, I believe I should be able to grab somebody. So I'm going to grab WT because he's Warforge and he's going to probably hold uh, way a shit ton. And I want to dimension door me and WT back onto the ship. All right. Can we only carry one or two people in the dimension door? One. one it's one. Yeah. And I was just thinking of weight, because if um, Ritson is going to try carry someone by flying, he will not be able to carry a Warforge. Right. right. Probably weighs a lot, too. Yeah, okay, I mean, so... Yeah, Capone probably weighs a I lot, think should, too. I think you should take Burn out. All right, so I'm going to Dimension Door with Capone. Capone. All right. Back onto the ship as well. 
Okay, so you open a dimension door and it works. The two of you go through and you're back on the ship. As you're back on the ship, you notice that the other um, passengers are all coming up from below and they're, they're th thoroughly confused as to what just happened. They have no clue what just happened, but they're really glad that the ship is still in one piece at this point. Now, I'm not sure if I can do this, but can I fly over and uh, with one of uh, my hands grab uh, Kala and with the other grab Ragnar? You can try. That is strength like checks. To, <laughs> to do. Yeah. Uh, let's give a strength check here and see. It's an 11. Can I use my mage hand, which was already cast before, to just give a little bit of an extra oomph on the on the? Sh <laughs> Would that be a strength check? Or just okay. Do it. You can help. You can do assist on this. All right, I got twelve okay. for the assist. Okay, so with the assist, you're able to to get one to get her on your on your and pick her up. All right. Carry them to safety, Retsum. All right, so you pick them up and you fly them over, and you're now safely back onto the airship. Well, that was close. <laughs> nice job, team. <laughs> good, good, quick thinking while we were falling through the air. Well done. <laughs> Get a I'm feeling that thing's falling. <laughs> Very confused at the moment. Very confused. All right, so you all have uh, returned to the ship. As you come back up, you you know, you're talking to the uh, pilot and the pilot is, is, is really concerned, obviously, you know, but they, they're able to get the ship turned around and headed back toward the island. Um, now that they're asking you questions, they're like, well, where did this you know dragon come from? Do you know who this is? Uh, do you know why they're, they, they, they were bothering us? Do you know what they, they were doing here? Um, and, and you also notice that the, the other, other airship is still just sitting there just abandoned my my best guess is they were pirates looking for our booty but we didn't let yeah. them get it no one oh, takes I'm our thinking, booty i'm thinking we got a free airship guys he said uh, no uh, means no so to our booty so did i attack an innocent bystander by the way did i just yeah say? yeah you did oh yeah. well, can, I, can i just go up there and just apologize <laughs> maybe throw him a couple pieces of gold say, you should apologize you know maybe I'll, I'll i'll say sorry i got a little excited and i'll just chuck him some gold and and uh you know just uh <laughs> give him a little pat on the back and be like you know no hard feelings right buddy yeah, <laughs> yeah i uh i go and uh i will offer healing to uh the innocent bystanders <laughs> <laughs> I got a little carried away. I raged right, in bro. his face. I got a little carried away. I got a little carried away. <laughs> I'll give him I'll give them both uh he hit two people, right? This poor this yeah, poor young a couple. This okay, poor I'll throw guy. out a couple first level cure wounds to them. And then I'll go to faceless and I'm gonna give faceless a level four cure wounds. Oh yes, please. Sometimes I just get a little carried away, that's all. You know. Just... Alright, there's 36 hit points to Faceless. Thank you. Alright. That's a huge heal. Yeah, that is a huge heal. Thanks, I work, I work out. <laughs> I, uh, there's 15 to the... Uh, I gave 15 to the uh, Innocent Bystanders each. I cast two first level spells for that one. Great, and they're very... And I, I told them it's free of charge, but going forward... If they need my services, that's not going to happen. And a couple of them take your business cards that you've had uh, printed yep. up. And, exactly. And, uh, you see where I was going with that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're very thankful for that. And then, and of course, you know, there will be some business come, moving forward for you. So that's great. Right, so up ahead, you do see uh, the, uh, the uh, Turtle Island coming up. Can we take the um, abandoned dropship and claim it for our own? Um, could. Anyone know how to fly a ship? <laughs> I think one does because obviously it's the purview of like the you know that one particular dragon marked house. So um, unless you have a dragon mark for that particular um, house, then you're probably not going to be able to fly an elemental airship. But 
Can we take a moment to reassess? So this dude just tran uh, teleported here with his buddy to protect him. Threw us off the ship, took his buddy and went away and took nobody else, right? Pretty much. Yeah, Pretty much. And, yeah. and turned himself into a dragon and that wasn't broken by dispel magic. Right. Turned himself into a dragon or did the dragon turn himself into a human? Yeah. Right. Because the dispel magic did nothing. Right. So... W were they here for us? To get us off of here? I mean... We are famous. We did save Eberron from the portals. So... Maybe people have heard of us. Maybe they've just, listened to my songs. They didn't come. They didn't take. Or we can ask around and see if they took anything else or they took anybody. I'm assuming not. Take anything else or anybody else. She did um, definitely uh, see that they did drop uh, kind of a, a little hint behind of, of who they might have been. And uh, as you're looking around, you, you notice that these. Uh, these, uh, this, this mage or this dragon might have indeed belonged to a particular group that is um, well known for uh, being anti draconic prophecy. Oh, okay, okay. Hmm. Okay. Bastards. So they came here to spread disinformation, is what you're trying to say. You surmise that they have reasons for you not to uh, to reach the Turtle Island. Gotcha. Okay. I was just goofing around. I'm going to... I'll see if this works. So I have a, a spell called Legend Lore, where I can name uh, or describe a person, place, or object, and the spell brings to my mind a brief summary of the significant lore about that thing. It's a level five spell. I was wondering Damn. if I could cast that and get some information on the dragon. All right, why don't you, uh, you, um, ah, well, we can do that. Anybody else want to do anything else while they're in the, in the process of doing that? Yeah, it's got a 10 minute cast time, so, you know, do what I you need to do. A little bit of time to, uh, go, Is that uh, it? Is that a skill check for you or of some form no. with the roll? That's a spell, I believe. Yeah, it's just a straight spell. There's no, uh, yeah. Okay. I don't think anybody else is badly injured. Uh, just try to, uh, if anybody's distressed or whatever, try to console them somewhat. <laughs> right. That sounds like a plan. And uh, also, do you are you guys planning on jumping over to the other ship, or are you planning on just going straight to the uh, Turtle Island? We know where the um, the pilot needs to head to next. I was going to suggest we. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was. I, I think we we should go check it out, right? I was going to suggest we wait until we find out the lore before jumping ship, because if we funny. find out that there's something that is bad about that ship, you know. We, we just got tossed off of one ship. We don't want to accidentally get tossed off of another one. We just burned all of our dimension doors to get over here. Probably a smart, smart thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if need be, I can burn the other ship to the ground. Oh, well, I can do that, too. <laughs> I mean, we can do it just to do it. Unless somebody wants to go over there and say, you know, check it out, see if there's any treasures. Yeah, somebody go over there. I, I promise I won't light the ship on fire. Um, should Sorry, we I'll fly all to... over. <laughs> <laughs> um, should and we? Won't, I mean, will. Should we ask the lady that's obviously um, giving us free passage if that ship belongs to her and it was stolen? Yeah, I don't think she was. I don't think she was on the ship with us, was she? Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. She's on the ship, yes. Oh, she was? Okay. That's, so, uh, um, the one that gave you passage is on the ship, indeed. Can yes. I do a history check on the ship? Mm. Ah, yeah, um, definitely. Uh, from the ship itself, you, you don't really notice anything special about the ship itself, other than 
seems to be from, um, like I said, related to the draconic prophecy, perhaps belonging to a set of mages who are determined to overthrow or, or kind of keep the draconic prophecy from being fulfilled. And uh, this group, um, and this also kind of ties into what you now know, um, lore, legend lore has shown that there, there is a group called the Chamber, and the Chamber is a loose alliance of dragons that is trying to manipulate events on Corvair uh, based off of the Draconic Prophecy. And uh, the, the chamber also has like, you know, kind of dragons all over the place who are trying to have their hand in things. And they are even like operating perhaps with uh, Randus Vol to restore the mark of death, do other things that are kind of, you know, in the manipulation of the Draconic Prophecy um, itself. And so they are... Um, definitely uh not you know, interested in uh doing things to improve the chronic prophecy or to to fill it they're interested in uh, doing things for their own purposes hmm. interesting so the chamber is like a is that, are they like a cult probably <laughs> It's a loose organization of dragons, basically. They're not, they're just kind of like group, a group of dragons, their resources and, and aliases and like, you know, and just a loose organization of, of, of different dragons. All right. So when I hear the word loose, my first thought is that we can probably break them up. Probably my second thought, actually. But yeah, no, the uh, second thought is that they can, uh, that, that we can probably break them up. If they're not too, uh, too well connected. Remember, you're married already. <laughs> There's always room for more wives. What if it's an open marriage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they oppose organizations that seek to understand the Draconic Prophecy, um, like the Undying Court, the Twelve, and the Lords of Dust. And um, by that safe, like I said, they kind of are also opponents of... Um, the shadow and the flame, which is related, of course, to flame keep. Nonetheless, right. their main goal, like I said, is to kind of just, uh, you know, use the uh, draconic prophecy for their own purposes and manipulate what's going on around. So you assume, like I said, from this, that they just are interested in stopping you from finding out what's going on on the yeah. island. You know, my thoughts of the flame keep, those assholes. <laughs> <laughs> not a fan uh okay. does my uh, i'm does anyone have anything else to do before my legend lore spell is finished casting not i nope no, i think we're, all I right think i'm good so what can we learn from this uh black dragon that's kind of what you learned so i just told you there it's kind of like what you've learned from it that's everything okay pretty much it just that they, that's kind of where they you figured they came from and what they're trying to accomplish at this point, as far as you can tell, and that this black dragon is part of this chamber organization. Then I uh, I guess I would fly on over to that boat. See what's, I think you're uh, safe. See what's happening over there. Can you carry me with you? Uh, I could try. <laughs> yeah, you, you. Oh, the, boat, the ship is guarding re gun redirected by the pilot and the pi and the ship is going to land on the island now so they're, they're actually going to land we can uh, switch scenes to the uh, to the island now okay all right Ooh, pretty All right, you ready? Approach an island that looks to be in the shape of a giant turtle until you get closer and you see the turtle's feet move. That's when you realize that the, the island actually is a giant turtle, an entire ecosystem that's developed on its back. You also see a man-made structure or two, and although you see no people, you see a fully built hut present. Cool. I got to get one of these. 
Please do not fuck the turtles. I love that. <laughs> Welcome to my summer home. <laughs> I thought that was just implied, but I'm guess you need a sign. Sometimes you yeah. need the rules so, to be some clear. People... Sometimes, sometimes yeah, some... the rules are just kind of there's gray areas. You know, you got to be clear. Exactly. Sometimes. <laughs> I just think this would be a great summer boat to have. You know, get one of these. Not insert something <laughs> into it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess that was the only one who thought that, but yeah, okay. All right, I guess you could ride it too, just without without doing anything to it. All right, that's cool. All right, so what do you guys want to do now? You are on the uh, sea, back of the sea turtle. Uh, I'm gonna turn to was it Ritson that had the vision? And I'll be like, ah, right, what are we up to here, mate? What, did you see anything particular in your vision? I, I wish I knew exactly uh, why we had to be here, but I don't. There was supposed to be a message from a golden dragon, but I don't know if that was just the, <laughs> the dragon we just faced or. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, that wait, was wait, a dragon. It was burnt into a wall. No, oh, the wall. Into wall. So we need to, should we be inspecting walls? I think so. Well, it's better it's a sign. I don't know. Maybe this was the message of, uh, please do not fuck the turtles. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe that's what they were trying to tell us. I'd like to do an investigation check. Right? On investigation. Okay, you roll around, you look around, and you're searching all the different walls, you're trying to see if there's anything unusual about any of the walls. You notice that a wall over to the right seems to have a little bit of a burnt area, a little bit of text to it. Um, yeah. The text appears to be in, in, in some sort of dr draconic sort of, uh, of, of, of script. Hey, uh, check this out, guys. Ooh. All right, I'll follow our WA over there. Yep, I'm coming, else to. coming too. Yep, I'm coming. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I might as well check it out. Let's see what this dream is all about here. RWA, are you able to read what's on the on the slate there? Uh, I'm not sure. Can I read it? Or is that a different you know language? Iconic? No, I don't think I do. No. Um, um, I'll come out? over and I will be able to read it because my ability, I can read anything in written form. Hey, get over there and read. and I will... I'm i sorry. I can read Draconic. My bad. It is on my okay. skill set. I can oh, read there it. You go. <laughs> All right, sweet. We can right. both read it. <laughs> yeah, work together. Figure out what it says. <laughs> I know words. <laughs> you read the wall and you notice that the writing is reading this the text says this birds and the bees the land and the trees the finger points the way heroes come thy will be done sleeping cats lie where they lay so do are we supposed to finger a cat <laughs> I heard the heroes come. That's all I'm excited uh, for. <laughs> Ragnar, uh, could you bend over for me? The birds are supposed to do something. I think the cats are supposed to lay down or something. So, so there's the birds and the bees. Something with trees. Land in the trees. Sleeping cats. Finger and points fingers the way. way. I like putting heroes a finger in Bondo's ass idea. I think that's... Cats lie where they lay. Wait. Retsum. Retsum and Ragnar are supposed to be together. Does that remind you of the Finger Bang Mountains? It does. What are the Finger Bang Mountains? I mean, I mean Finger Bone Mountains, but um, yeah, same difference. <laughs> I like <laughs> Finger Bang Mountains. Let's local, go visit the local, local, the local lingo. Yeah, for it exactly. Is, uh, just Finger Bang. I'm going to go uh, with Finger Bang. It's... uh. It's a large mountain range where uh, my village is actually at the top. 
Yeah, my village is kind of at the bottom. Okay, so lovers. you need to stick a pinky into the behind, and Retsum is the top, and Ragnar is the bottom. Yes, <laughs> there's only one way to find out. Yeah, we got to test this. I, th I think we do a group vote on this. Should, should, should we all watch? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're a team here, guys. Like, <laughs> this is just Tedra trying finger. to get back to the uh, thousand years of death. <laughs> yeah. We got to do what's good for the I team, have... guys. We're, you know, sometimes you just got to do some sacrifices. That's it. <laughs> yeah. My uh, my pinky is all lubed up and uh, and ready. Just give it a little lick there. Nice. Okay. So this was a dirty note that I found. <laughs> <laughs> That's a conversation. Mm. Um, yeah, this is definitely yeah. referring to to where where we're from. Oh, 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 okay. My bad. I mean, there's only one way to find out, uh, right? We're not judging, mate. If this is what you do, where you come from. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're, we're not judging. But there might be what Retsum does where he comes from, but I mean, this, this is not normal in my my village. Yeah, sometimes Retsum. you just need to pop a digit up there, you know? <laughs> Go to second knuckle. Only second knuckle. Never third. Dear. I, oh, I mean... But where I come from, if you you stick fingers where they don't belong, you get hit with level five spells. I'm cool with that, <laughs> and I just I just fire away with the pinky right on up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Am I the only person who's sitting here counting my knuckles, going, "Wait, there were three? <laughs> I just learned that. I'm like staring at my hand, like, whoa. <laughs> Third is always too far. Yeah. Okay, I've learned my lesson. Okay. Uh, no. Please not. <laughs> well, I learned okay, something uh, today. I got more lessons to learn. <laughs> Renzi wants you to go to the fourth knuckle, also known as the wrist. Yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning lots here too. Uh, anything else? Kala does there? not like the fifth scene. <laughs> That's what they will say. <laughs> All right, so do we just do we go to the Finger Bang Mountains? Let's go. Let's go. You want to look at anything else on the island while you're there, or are you just going to? Uh... I, I think we should I mean, check the treasure chest. It's yeah, big, there's a giant yeah. treasure chest. Big we might glowing, want to look at it. Big glowing <laughs> treasure chest. Can I look at it? There's yep. Also, a pretty fountain and some pretty huts. Yeah, I like get it. The treasure chest. Yeah, I'll just do a quick uh, a quick survey of the island. We got the sign. We got the trees around the side. A couple of ruins. There's a couple of boats hanging off the edge. In the middle here, we got the chest. A couple of stone yeah. heads. We Some houses. Hut. A small hut toilet. here and another or a hut. Turtle. I confuse toilets and turtles as well. That's that's why I had to put the sign in. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm gonna go check out one of those huts. Actually, I mean, I don't fuck toilets. I take that back. <laughs> um, uh, can I do an investigation on that treasure chest? Yeah, sure. All right. Yeah, I have, like, look the at the best. treasure chest, and inside the treasure chest, you find a button. Oh, can I take the button? No, it's just a button you push. Oh, I pushed it. Um, yeah. And, uh, um, Ragnar, as you're searching the uh, hut, you find a pin with a little emerald nib on the end of it. Pen with an emerald nib? Hmm? Can I push the button? I really want to push it. Uh, before you push the button, let me go check. Is it a big uh, red button? Like, if it's a big red button, you can't, you can't push, it. push it. Push it. Yeah, but we gotta wait push it. until we check the other hut. Push the button. Oh, fine, I'll wait. Push the this way button. we get all the goodies. All right, good. hurry up. Push the button. <laughs> Push the button. <laughs> Don't listen oh, to him. I will. I will. Push the push button. It. Just push it once. Push it real good. Push it once. Just one little push. Just, <laughs> just one <laughs> little push. <laughs> okay. Just a little. Just... So I believe Retsum is checking out the other uh, hut. Yes. I find nothing. Just, just a nothing. little push oh, in there. Oh, sucks. So I get to push the button. To push the button. Push the push button. Push it. I'm pushing the yeah, button. I guess you can go ahead and push it. I'm pushing it. Y'all better save me. 
Oh, push the button. And you hear a noise that sounds like turtles having sex off yes. the system. Oh, <laughs> Worth it. Worth every second of it. <laughs> Definitely sound like How, you've, you've done that before. Are they still going? How long is this lasting? What's going on? Uh, you can well, follow the noise. Yeah. Can we follow Herbal's, it? Yeah. yeah. Slow dick. They yeah, they 100% do. 100% slow dick. Yeah, they yeah. went 100. 100. Yeah. I beg to differ, so let's follow the noise. Let's figure it out. Okay. We gotta be honest. It leads to one of the walls on the other side of the ruins. I was not expecting that response when pushing the button. I gotta be honest. <laughs> Expect the unexpected. Right about this is exactly over... where that line came from. Right about over there. And you see that in there, there's a space that's opened up in the wall. Oh, it's like a pretty deep in. In the space, you see like a little, what looks like a shield embedded in it. A shield? Can I grab the shield? You can try. That might be a... Yeah, can I grab the shield? Right. Roll a um save. A dick save. Oh, a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, right? Uh, Take six yeah, points of good. damage as a uh, um as a like a mini door slams in front of this little shield. A mini door. Just a little door, like just a little kind of like a little slat that goes off. It's kind of blocking it now. All right, I'm gonna rip Shut. this door up. I'm gonna rip it off. All right. And try. Oh. What are we doing? A strength check? What are we doing? Can here? I step back away from the door, like a good, <laughs> I don't know, thirty feet. I feel like I should take a step back too. I don't really want to get hurt. Huddle around me, guys. It's fine. Just let's uh, let's uh. <laughs> Let's just see what happens here. <laughs> Cradle Cray them while you're ripping a door off. Come, come close to me for a second. I just want to show you guys something. <laughs> I'm interested in the fucking turtles. Not I'll, dying. I'll be, We're I'll going be right to... behind Capone, just kind of like peeking over his shoulder. Thank you, thank you. So I'm gonna put my foot on the wall and I'm gonna yank this thing off. We're doing a strength check here. Oh, yikes! A big eight. Yeah, nothing happens. You're not mm. didn't even budge. Mm. Anyone else want to try? A strong door. Let me hold up. Do we have Can anyone that's good at picking locks? Yeah, do we oh, yeah, my, the handle I'm a lock picker, yeah. We're <laughs> been faceless. <laughs> You're the one that got the door to drop in that place. Uh fourteen on lock picking. Still doesn't budge. Oh. Can I attack this door? Can I swing at it? Doesn't budge. Hey, magic um, users, can you guys uh, give us some magic insight on this thing? I actually, yeah. I was gonna oh. cast my mage hand and just try knocking. Have we tried knocking yet? Um, I was thinking maybe someone go push the button while we open the door. Well, let's try. Yeah. Uh, has anybody tried the Oops. handle too? We did. That's I don't the, think we did that. The other thing I was going to suggest, yeah, <laughs> just try opening the door. It's just just unlock it. The lock's on the outside. It's just like just <laughs> turn just the handle. The door. Just mm -hmm. open the door. <laughs> just going door to try open. to open the door. Yeah, just open it. Okay, let's open it. I'll go for it. I'll open it. Go for it. I feel like you would be smart enough to do this. It's gotta well, grab the. I'm, I'm suggesting it. just try and open it. It's gotta grab it's the budge. handle. Okay. Not All right. So maybe someone should try the button then in conjunction. Maybe. All uh, right. I'll go. Yeah. Okay. okay. No, no, you go. You go. All right. I'll go press the button. I'm pressing the button. I'm three, press two, press. one. Push and pull. <laughs> Does not budge. I liked my, uh, my sex video. I liked Coops's. Uh, <laughs> I liked Coops's idea of knocking. I mean, be polite. We got to be polite a little bit sometimes, though. <laughs> right? Just a little like. How little... about you knock? It's the guy that attacked the innocent people. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes were made. I just came in swinging. <laughs> I, 
I, I said I, I was sorry. So confused. I was like, those guys are enemies? I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> just... I know we're not metagaming, so I just let it happen. I, uh, I was <laughs> raging. I was giving them eye it contact. It's fine. You know? It made sense. You're raging. You don't know these people. You just met them recently. <laughs> they, uh... they could be rude. <laughs> but we're friends now. We're friends now. We're friends now. Wait a minute. Set up. We, we didn't know. <laughs> All right. So are we knocking and seeing if that does anything? Yeah. Okay. Is anybody gifted in the arcane magic that would might be able to get some intel on this, possibly? Um, can I, I am. Magic? I can do the arcane magic. Do you want me to do that? Arc I can. I mean, I, I let's just like to point out that um, all magic is arcane. Koopsa hasn't even knocked yet. Polite guys. What are you? Divine magic. <laughs> Let Koops the man knock. knock first. Go ahead and knock, Koops. All right. Does that make bug. a sound? Nothing happens. If a turtle answers right. that door, okay. Can I okay. do detect magic on the door? I just did arcane magic. Arcana check. You notice that there is definitely a way to open the door, but it is very, very specific conditions that will open the door. Guys, I think we have to fuck uh, There's a batch of the wood. <laughs> That's what I'm just going to say. You have to fuck the turtle. <laughs> Can I go my talk pants, to the turtle? My pants yeah. are already down. Uh, uh, <laughs> give me the turtle. Like My pants I, are already down. What about, um, what about the writing on the wall? Maybe uh, it's to do with that. Wait, did you say you want to run at the door? <laughs> no, I said the writing on the wall. No. Oh, Maybe oh, yeah. it has something to do with opening the door. Oh, that's what it is. Uh, Retsam, you got to... Finger Ragnar and push him into the door. Let's try it. Uh, I think right. not. We are let, let, let me ask you a serious question just before we go doing anything rash here. <laughs> Why do we have this pen with the emerald mid? He's gonna fuck. Oh, I gotta, you I gotta that. put that up your butt. <laughs> we won't know until we try. We won't know until we try. Yeah. Have we? Right. I don't know. Tried writing on the door open. <laughs> well, I that, mean, I that piece, the but... piece with the that piece, will it fit in the keyhole? All right, give me a turtle. Give me a turtle. I, I'm gonna <laughs> rail a turtle. If there's a keyhole, I need a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> give me the prettiest turtle we have. I don't. I just and I just no eye contact. I just want to. I'm doing it for the team. We're doing this for the team. Give me a turtle. <laughs> There's sure, turtles on there, but it's wait. The islands that don't fuck them. Uh, you know, sometimes rules need to be broken. <laughs> oh, Capone! I don't know. I really think you shouldn't do that. You might hurt them. Well, I'm doing it for the team, guys. We're doing this the for the team. Birds. I'm not getting this any pleasure in this. I'm sure you're only not. just like a only just a little bit. Just we're testing. I just want to point out that she's worried about animal animal abuse from fucking a turtle, but she's okay with people sticking fingers up a cat's ass. Mm -hmm. Well, not just any cat's ass. Is girl. that the turtle? It's a frog. <laughs> oh, that was a frog. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find... I don't think I have a turtle, to be honest. All right, that's that. fine. There's no turtles, so you can't... No, 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 tur no, no having sex with turtles, sorry. Okay, that's... You know, it's, I'm a little disappointed, but it's fine. <laughs> can I go talk to this turtle that we're riding on? Unless you can speak turtle, why not? Uh, I can cast tongues. Is there? I can go with. Oh no! Um, those are kind of just turtles. What's the time frame that we've been just chilling? What does be class as a short rest? We're no. not doing anything. No. No, that's when you like take like a um, full hour yeah. and just rest. Actually. Um. So then I can't cast tongues. So I'm out of spell. I ask our favorite druid, hey, you're very in tune with nature. Do you know anything about this whole setup that might give us a hint on what we need to do? Well, like a nature check by chance? I can do a nature check, yeah. All right, I'll do that real quick. Being a druid, 19. There's nothing inherently natural about this door. But you do kind of get the, the impression that perhaps it does tie into at least uh, to a degree what was on the wall. Um, 
<laughs> wow. Or Did not see that coming. The overall concept of what was on the wall. <laughs> I guys, I I'm still thinking this is this is the play. I think Redsome, you gotta just like take it. I'm just trying to remember Pinky. I'm trying to remember exactly what the wall said. It said to uh, stick a pinky. It said I gotta I gotta I gotta finger your booty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think those are the exact <laughs> words, actually. Those are the exact words. I'm pretty just sure. a pinky. Just a pinky. Yeah. I remember it's only uh two or three or four knuckles. Pen. We could try it with the pen too, see if that you guys are not trying. <laughs> I, I mean think you should just just take it. I, just take it. I was willing to fuck a turtle. I mean, you know, I think yeah, sacrifices need to be made, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well some people like it. Just a little me, pinky in the butt hole. Yeah. I'm willing to burn this entire island to the ground. <laughs> Well, the door is not sure. budging. Um, <laughs> all right, well. Can all right, I so the, 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 the birds uh, and the bees. Bruno couldn't, I mean, sorry, Capone couldn't open the, the, the door. Why don't you keep it simple? Ella couldn't open the door. Maybe the cat. What if, yeah, wait, what if you two tried to open it together? Touch it. What if you put your Touch finger it. in the hole? In the door, or just yeah. like what if and what if Redsome yeah, and Ragnar sure tried to open it together? Like, oh. Yeah, well, yeah, touch it together. Just touch it. Yeah. Just walk up to it, and your what about or your? What, why don't we? Why don't we go over what it said again, so that we can get an exact idea? Uh, okay. Just grab it. Grab what the did door. It say again. I'm gonna try to grab the door. You tried that already. Okay, gra you, I think you guys need to grab the door. So uh, just I, grab the door. I well, stick a pinky. I stick a pinky up, uh, up Ragnar's booty. I grab his hand and we try and open the door together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As you both touch the door at the same time, the door magically opens. Yay! 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 <laughs> the pinky up the I knew it involved sticking a pinky up there. That's it. That, it that probably matter? didn't. It probably yeah. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was excited about that though. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, you're able to retrieve the shield. You notice the shield has it's kind of like a a kind of you know wooden shield, but it also has like an engraving of a of a of a what you picture to be a dragon turtle on it. Mm -hmm. um, does can I do uh, detect magic on it to get an idea of? What if it has any magic properties? Uh, sure. You do uh, notice that it is indeed uh, magical. It's like, you know, kind of glow to it. So it does some magic to it. Yeah. So a dragon and a turtle made a baby. And then somebody yeah. put that picture on this magic shield. Hmm. So it's a love story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, so now, what do we do with this information? You can take the shield, and someone can use the shield. I do know. carry a shield, but I don't know what it does. Want to uh, find out what it does? Do an arc. Somebody can do an arcana check. All right, I'll try an arcana check this time. Uh, 15. All right. You determined that this is a shield of the dragon turtle. It is a one plus one non-metallic shield. If the user takes damage from the dragon's breath weapon, can you spend their reaction to take half damage from it? Um, I think that'd be good for you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a shield bearer too. I've got a shield plus one, so I've got a, I've got a um, a good shield too. Since All I'm right. a melee character, can I take this one? Yeah, and, go for it, man. You can have and it. And have uh, my shield plus one. I already have a plus one shield, but that's alright. Go for it, man. Just because I'll be, obviously, up front melee damaging. Yeah, that's cool. Go for it. Okay, cool. Thank you. And then, uh, from here, you guys can uh, head on to next week to uh, the finger ba finger bone slash finger bang mountains. 
Nicely Ooh, done. Nice. Good job. Nicely done. Good job, team. Congrats, team. We crushed it this week. It was good. Beckers abound, dig fire around, snorting magic and moon dust. Riding dragons flood, semen and blood, summons ready to bust. Crew of fucking beauties, we screw and do drugs all day and night. Healers and dealers, we that clap and fuck our way into the fight. Forge and I do electrify through my penis. I rhymes in full supply. I'm gonna ride, sure you can't deny. Risk it, rip, rap, flip, by the name, bless both.